Parental discretion is advised. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza. The podcasters. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, episode 468. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitters here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Talk about professionalized wrestling for a 468th night, a Tuesday in a row. Uh, not, not entirely, but close enough. With me and my compatriot from the deep dark uh, outer reaches, uh, right next door to Sawtooth Willie is DJ Lunchbox, Papa Lunchbox. Hi everybody. Uh it's true. I am uh my home is normally right next to Sawtooth Willie, uh as Sawtooth Willie is next to everyone's home because he's in your basement right now. If you don't have a basement, he's down there anyway, building you one. You know, go and check him out. He's he's there there waiting for you. It was so weird. I was at the point and I was asked, Is so where does Sawtooth Willie live? I'm like What? (laughs) Under your feet. Who asked you that? The the wife of the show, of course. Oh. Nightmares. So, that's Is less that, exciting. It's less exciting. <laughs> She's. I mean, it's cool that she did, but I was hoping it was like a stranger or some person who I didn't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also with us from FJ Town, uh, Pocky Town, <laughs> of course, Bobby FJ Town joins us. Um, Sorg, I'd like to change my name officially to Bobby F Hockeyville. Okay. Because I now live in Hockeyville. Yes, you do. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. Awesome thing this weekend. If you don't know, Johnstown is now Hockeyville. Yes, it thanks, is. Yes, thanks it to is. the fine people at Kraft Foods who bring us various macaroni and cheese dishes and possibly uh, dr- salad dressings. And now hockey. And now hockey, yes. And now hockey. Also joining us, a uh, very soggy Matt Carlins from MainstreamMatt.blogspot.com. Oh. It's, you- okay. it's okay. It's okay. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't cry through that East. No, I didn't cry through that NXT special. <laughs> okay. What's, Just uh, go on, Sork. I didn't happening? cry through okay. E60. I, I um, well, apparently, uh, the, the notes here say that he watched the uh, E60 NXT special, and uh, and I know the the Periscope was dry those tears. It's the Q and A from Corey Graves after the show. So I I guess I guess something happened on there. I, I did not get a chance to watch it. It was right before this show, and uh, well, he's having some issues out there. Um, but we'll we'll get into that. But of course, this is your Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can find us where at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can subscribe to this and so many other shows on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker all kinds of places and you can also drop us a line to that email address good time yes it's good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com and you can also uh, drop to the hotline of 412-206-WMS0 uh, please uh, uh, follow us on the tweets at Mayhem Show Wrestling Mayhem Show has a great group on Facebook and we have other pages and such on Google Plus and Facebook as well and uh, big thanks to Basic Sickness at basicsickness.com for the intro outro music for this and the Indie Mayhem Show hey also please check out the Indie Mayhem Show we actually pre-recorded a great interview with Delilah Doom we talked to her a year ago after her like second match and a year later she's doing some awesome stuff look up delilah doom is ready on youtube and there's a video that you would not be disappointed in um especially if you like malls and neon colors uh so let's get into oh oh, and then let's let's yes you bobby of course is a big fan of both those things and the ladies big thanks to our patreon uh, uh, supporters of course have been supporting us for several months now uh putting their money where their mouth is they find value and fun with this show and they're supporting us with their dollars at uh patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show that includes of course our friend from uh, the wrestling revolution.com please go check them out and of course the so uh big thanks to them for supporting the show uh all of this time you can too and become our boss and we get a, a yeah i just did a state of the mayhem for them uh it's a little bit inside of what's going on around the shows and stuff we're building stuff that's coming up stuff we're hoping to do um, it's very also, exclusive we don't even get to see it also to the and we're on the show also to the patrons this week i'm sorry 
No, 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 Bobby. Okay, cut his mic. He's, You'll he's get gone. that he's once gone. you Kick him out. To Kick him out. Yep, Bobby's, him out. Bobby's off the show. That's right. And, of course, you can join us live. Live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Usually starts around about 9 p.m. Eastern time, where we get a little bit of video game talk. That, too. Um, so let's get right into it. Our first topic we talked about last night. Uh, Raw was amazing. Payback is getting interesting. Um, and I think we have a few more comments later in the show uh, uh, from our fan mail. Maybe I'll dip into those a little bit during our conversation. But now we have a oh, yeah. Dean Ambrose factor. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh. The greatest thing in the world. Uh, this this kind of changed the game a little bit. Or is he just a guy to throw in there to, to, to make things a little more interesting in this main event? Of, uh, you know, I mean, we, we had a tremendous match with uh, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose last night. Uh, we know these guys can go. We know the Shield. I mean, really, all three of the Shield and Randy Orton mm-hmm. in one match. Yeah. This is going to be crazy. Basically, it's the Shield versus Randy Orton. Only the Shield are, are mad at each other. <laughs> yeah, basically, basically, more or less. Well, I, well, Dean Ambrose doesn't have a beef with Reigns, though, right? No, no, he doesn't. It's, he was protecting his his, his brother last. Right, night. right, right. So, so um, and, and it was funny. Somebody pointed out um, that that Ambrose had the same look as when the Shield broke up when he got hit by Orton. <laughs> Wait, that was that was kind of entertaining, um, but but does this really uh, change the face for you guys for this next pay per view? Does this get you uh, generally more excited about it? Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I am so much more interested in this than I am than I was in Extreme Rules. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm excited because I think we're virtually guaranteed to have a triple power bomb on Randy Orton during that match, which is very exciting to me. Mm-hmm. Um, we had some comments. I'll, I'll, I'll get into maybe a little bit more of the uh, email later. But uh, Matt Mike, uh, he's busy this evening, so he, he sent an email. Uh, he says, is it just me or is Payback kind of shaping up to be a pretty cool now? I love that Ambrose was added to the title picture. And part of me hopes that this is just uh, Rollins turning uh, turning on the authority in a huge plan to reunite the Shield and destroy Orton. <laughs> also, <laughs> Naomi and her new Jacqueline look is the best thing that could have happened to her. <laughs> I kind of agree on both those points. Um, but, uh, but no, it's... This is exciting. We, I, I feel disagree. like you disagree. I disagree. Why, why do you disagree? I disagree about the Naomi and Jacqueline look. You think so? Because because love light up shoes, light up shoes. Mm, exactly. I'm gonna miss those. They were just it's, getting into it. Chachi wants so a pair. So much more interesting than anything else. But what if she wears the light up shoes with the Jacqueline thing? It's very confusing. now you're talking. There you go. <laughs> now you're talking. I mean, I don't want to take it. She's a fan. she's a wonderful wrestler, very entertaining to watch. I'm glad she's getting featured. But come on, man, those light up shoes are in just enchanting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So going into this is another free month for WWE Network. Um, I which I I think I heard about somebody who's gotten like three free months. I'm a little little bugged by that myself as a well, long time. If you know how to play the game, then uh, I guess you could pull that off. I but suppose tell them so. about the game and how you play it. Don't expect me to feel sorry. <laughs> I'm still getting to feel sorry. It's smart. It's smart. It's still nine ninety nine. That's right. Review that you would pay fifty dollars for. That's I right. wouldn't buy them all, but the deal is still there. The value is still there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If everyone wants to go to all this trouble to beat the system, you know what? Have fun. Have at it, kids. I got a free T-shirt coming. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. It's never going to come. I got a gift card. <laughs> Mine never came, and I lost the gift card code, so it's completely gone. <sighs> Damn, Sorg. Yeah. Yeah, I just failed on so many levels on this one. So, um, anyways, uh, back to it. But, uh, but no, I mean, really, I think this pay-per-view is really shaping up really well. Um, they, 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 in, 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 um, you know... Uh, they're really stepping up with stuff. We had a really big week last week with original content, uh, uh, you know, of course. And uh, but it's kind of weird we have a, a this kind of back to back. You know, do you feel we get better pay per views when they have the free weeks or months? Mm, no, no, mm-hmm. no. Extreme Rules was kind of not great. Yeah, and that was a free month. Yeah, certainly it was okay. It was a pay per view. And I guess Fastlane was another one. It was kind of rough too, wasn't it? So yeah, Fastlane was yeah. very boring. All right. Uh, so I would generally, uh, and, and I think most of you didn't, were not on the raw la- uh, raw wrap up last night, but uh, it, it it was tremendous. And of course, we're getting an announcement that Raw Alternative is going to be returning here on the 18th of this month. Um, but I'm kind of worried because last time they did that, uh, it was a pretty good Raw, and I'm kind of curious if it's going to be the same thing, or was it just because we we're in Montreal last night? 
Well, Sorg, um, this is the time of year when um, what we in the business like to call May sweeps. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the time of the year when oh. those in the television industry like to do a little thing called trying. Um, so that's what <laughs> WWE is doing right now uh, because they got to get their ratings up because they got to set their ad rates um, for the next uh, month or so. So, yes, you are correct. Raw Alternative is possibly walking into a buzzsaw yet again. Yes, independent pro wrestling does not have May sweeps to worry about. They're just mm -hmm. looking for anything they can. It's about due, I guess. But, you know, they probably scheduled because Raw has been so lackluster over the last month, say. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. And maybe it's just poor tri timing on their point part. So, um, any other thoughts about this going into it? Um, a Fatal 4-Way. I guess we had a one-on-one -on -one match last month. But uh, I feel like we're going into Extreme Rules Part 2 with all the gimmicks going on. Or is that what we need to do to really decipher these things? Hmm. I don't, I don't know. It's not, it's not that bad. Um, they just no. have gimmicks. Like, not just extreme rules. Like, they have gimmick matches. That's true. Like, regular pay-per-views. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's touch base with uh, um, uh, one thing. You know, hey, check out our friends at PittsburghWrestling.com. Uh, we are actually working on IndieWrestling.us as a little spinoff of this, as a new home for all those digital downloads for our friends from IWCRWA. Um, a vicious Outcast Wrestling, which I visited this past week. Check out my thoughts on that on the Indie Mayhem show. Lots of friends of the show, um, including G Raver and Facade in a chain match. It was better than Rusev, Rusev and John Cena's. I can tell you that. It involved chairs. It also almost landed in my lap. So Did there they was actually that use the chain? They oh, they used the chain. There's <laughs> a there's a point. I talk about this on the on the Indie Mayhem show. There's a point where he he he, he yanks the chain to pull G Raver off the top rope and yells, "Get over here!" <laughs> nice. Great. Made my mind. Also, the Queen of, Queen of the Ring tournament. A lot of uh, lovely ladies, and one of them is going to be on actually the Indie Mayhem show in the coming uh, months, and uh, and a lot of fun there. And of course, uh, coming up, well, the most recently, Gregory Iron has a best of Prime Cups that's on there, and uh, other guys uh, coming soon: Shima Zion, Zima Ion, uh, the DJ Z on on TNA on there, and uh, a whole bunch of guys. And and and, and oddly, I look back to Super Indie Ten. And, of course, we talked about on the Mayhem Minute this morning and last night on the Raw Wrap-Up about Sami Zayn. And I think we'll talk about him in a minute here. Uh, but there's a guy that resembles him called El Generico that was involved with the Super Indie 10 with the IWC a few years ago. We're actually now hitting, I think, 14 this year. So uh, uh, something else you can check out there and check out all that stuff at PittsburghWrestling.com and uh, coming up soon on IndieWrestling.us. Support the show, support uh, stuff in the network, support Indie Wrestling and a true alternative if you are a little tired of Raw. So uh, so with that, let's go into topic number two. Um, this, this, is, this is what we were crying about a little earlier. Oh, wait, no, no. Actually, I skipped one. Lunchbox, what's up? <laughs> there was a segment that we did not get to do last week, or it was a continuing segment. Our predictions from 1988. Yes, <laughs> I didn't realize it would be this early in the. Uh... <laughs> Gonna go back in time. In the, uh, in the, now explain uh, to us as you're preparing what what are the predictions from 1988 for those maybe checking this out for the first time. I bought a magazine known as Sports Review Wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, it was published in 1998, and I bought it because on the cover it says predictions through 1998. It is a look at the future from the past. Uh, we have Which had... is also the past. <laughs> yes, that's correct. But it sounds more interesting to say it that way. Uh, <laughs> we have had such incredible predictions as... Uh, WrestleMania 14, the main event will be wrestled in space. Shane McMahon will take over the uh, WWF. Uh, 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 Sean McMahon. Sean McMahon, sorry. Take over the WWF. Um, and Michael Jackson will become a wrestler uh, with <laughs> Pepsi Cola as a sponsor. So, <laughs> where job. did we leave off? I don't actually remember. What was it? The Road Warriors? <laughs> I think it was uh, um, Road Warriors, WrestleMania on the Moon, something like that. Alpha. Owen Hart, Larry Zabisco. Larry Zabisco, perhaps as early as mid-1989, will return to the WWF and instantly become one of the Federation's biggest stars. Zabisco and Federation officials were surprised by the long memories of WWF fans who chanted, Bruno, Bruno, during Zabisco's first ring appearance at a television 
uh, gap between the pages taping. <laughs> Taking full advantage of his rekindled infamy, Zabiska will will begin a Roddy Piper style interview segment on each installment of Superstars of Wrestling, incre- incensing fans with his brash comments. Co-host for the interview segments will be Baby Doll, who will reappear when Zabisco wins the Intercontinental title from the Ultimate Warrior. Intercontinental? What? Ultimate wow. Warrior? Yep. Mary Zabisco? Yeah. Baby Doll? Not accurate and a little dull, but this next one is a little spicier. Wait, does it say anything about Larry Zabisco hiding outside of Bruno San Martino's house? It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> yeah, that needs to become a, a plot point at some point here. <laughs> After winning the Intercontinental Belt from Brutus Beefcake in 1993, Hulk Hogan will leave the WWF <laughs> and join the NWA's Four Horsemen. What? Hogan wow. declaring that, huh. quote, there just aren't any more titles for me to win in the WWF. We'll sign a multi-year $15 million contract with Horseman Executive Director J.J. Dillon. Ric Flair, leader of the formidable foursome, will say, I'm glad Hogan has finally gotten fed up with the WWF and decided to join us. We'll get him every major title. Regarding his decision to turn back to Rule Breaker, which he, in fact, was during his early 80s tenure in the WWF, Hogan will say, I'm so sick of the rules. Rules are limiting. Wait. Rules are limiting to a legend like me. Now I'm free. Hulk Hogan never wrestled with the rules. He always always wrestled as a heel, but he was a face. That's true. Yeah, Yeah, okay. He did. So that one... That one is a little closer to accurate. Hulk Hogan did leave the WWE for the WCW, and instead of joining the Four Horsemen, he was one of the founding members of a little group you may have heard of known as the NWO. Yeah, but who could have foreseen a whole new group taking over the industry back then in 1988? Mm -hmm. True. True. These are all, like, we've had a couple that have been kind of oddly accurate, Mm -hmm. and I feel like that one isn't far off. Mm Mm-hmm. So, so tune in next week when we talk about the Von Erich family. Oh no! Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth. Oh no! And Nick Kinski. Nick Kinski. Who? Uh. <laughs> I'm trying to see how close that was. How much did he get when he joined? In uh, uh, they don't, they don't. Uh, of course, this article is actually from WWE.com, so they're not going to tell you numbers. <laughs> it, does it say what year he joined? Uh, 1994. What was the year that they gave? I think it was 93. I think it was 93. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was doing Thunder in Paradise on the on the Walt Disney lots in 1993 and 94. And uh, and so Paradise. very 93. close. Very, very close. Yeah. And Crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully in this. There's a picture of him with Ted Turner. Um, do, 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 do. No, yeah, I'm not seeing a number here. WWE, WWE wouldn't disclose that. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. They, wouldn't, they don't talk numbers. But anyways. Um, so thank you for that predictions from 1988 new segment. Let us know what you think of it. And uh, check out our old ones. We actually have most of them clipped out over on, um, over on our YouTube channel. Uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show over there. So please go check those out as well. NXT Arrival. I'll never, I'll never boo Adam Rose again. Who wrote this? Nope. Um, nope. Nope. Okay. Matt Carlos, the E60 special is tonight. And of course, you know, half the people we see uh, in the previous appear to be already on the main roster. It was done a while ago. I mean, the, 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 the turnaround time is pretty crazy uh, for something probably as well done as ESPN probably did for this show. Um, guy who works on TV. Hi, Mainstream Matt can probably tell yeah. us about that. Uh, so you watch this tonight. Uh, you know, of course, I'm busy doing some of the other podcasts and everything. Wow. So, so how was it? Real good. Okay. Real good. <laughs> they um, they apparently followed around some of the NXT guys for years, Sorg. Really? Wow. Years. Wow. They didn't just drop in for a few days. This thing was they they followed a few guys for a lot. The um the the hour um this hour I don't even know what I should call it an episode documentary. I'm not sure what I should call this. This hour long program uh, focused primarily on three people: um, Xavier Woods, Corey Graves, and Adam Rose. Um, and kind of showed 
um, their progression and how they're developing their character. All curtains were torn down. They were using everybody's real name. Um, Michael Cole's real name, Triple H's real name, <laughs> everybody's real name. Um, so it was all Wait a minute, Michael Cole's real name? He's not Michael, Michael Cole? Michael Cole's real name is not Michael Cole. What? What? I seriously, I seriously I had know. no idea. <laughs> he was a war correspondent. I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I know, that, that that was very high up on the mind-blowing uh, moments yeah. from this is show. It, is his real name Maggle, though? <laughs> it, yeah, his real name is Maggle. Okay, yeah, it's Maggle. You're, you're right, how do you get that? Um, I live um, in the of Maggle. <laughs> there was a lot of um, there was a lot of Triple H. There was a uh, pretty lengthy in interview um, between ESPN's Jeremy Schapp and uh, Vince McMahon sprinkled in there. There was a hearty helping of Bill DeMott, um, which was really interesting to see. But I guess hey, he was the head trainer at the time, so obviously he's all over this freaking thing. Um, but it's actually it's interesting because um, he basically comes off as. Hey, he seems like a nice guy. He's very encouraging. He's helping these guys out. So Bill DeMont like, comes out shining like a diamond. Um, That's some rough timing right there. <laughs> um, you get to see a lot of their home lives. Um, and, and you get to see that um, you know, Corey Graves is, is, is married and he's got two kids. And you get to see Adam Rose is married and he's got a kid and another on the way. And, mm -hmm. and Xavier Woods is studying for his Ph.D., and um, they're talking a lot about, you know, developing their characters. It's, a lot of the storylines are based on um, how can I get my character to the point where I get into the main roster. So you see a lot of um, Adam Rose's prior persona as Leo Kruger and his struggles with that character and trying to make that something that can translate into a main roster character. And uh, they actually have like what I assume is like the – I don't know, the creative meeting for NXT um, with Triple H at the head of the table. And they're basically conversing about the characters and they're talking about, you know, Leo Kruger, I, you know, who would want to see, you know, you know, obviously Leo Kruger, the wrestler, while very skilled and fundamentally sound, you know, they're talking about, is this a character that people will pay to see? And they're like, no. So what do we do? You know, and, and you know, he's getting older and he's got to figure this out. And, and you learn that, his his um, his first child is had um, some complications, um, and actually, um, I, I didn't catch the full details on it because I was a little bit distracted at the time. But that uh, that Adam Rose, I'm just going to call him Adam Rose from now on. Um, Adam Rose's um, um, oldest son um, has a medical issue where he basically has to be you know, fed because he, um, he's having some medical problems. So like sympathy is on. Okay. So you got a little baby at home. Um, Adam Rose is like, you know, getting up there in age, Leo Kruger ain't working. He's got to figure something out. Sword. He's got to get to that main roster. He's got to make that money for his family. He's got to do it. Um, so they go through the process and you see how they concocted Adam Rose and how he has to go out and perform as Adam Rose and the tension of, you know, will the fans go for this? This is do or die. This is sink or swim. My family's counting on me to make this thing work. And, of course, we all know how it worked because we – hopefully a lot of you guys remember when Adam Rose debuted and how awesome that moment was. Mm -hmm. Well, newsflash, everybody. Um, all of you who got all caught up in Adam Rose's debut on NXT, you um, unknowingly may have saved his family. So congratulations to all of you. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> because if I'm um, seriously, the stakes, the, the stakes that are put in place are so high that like, you're like, Oh my God, Adam Rose has got to make this work. And of course he does. And he, he, he's on the main roster now. So things are going better um, for him and he's making some more money. So that's always a good thing. Um, they go into Corey Graves, whole story, um, sword, which you know very well. Mm -hmm. Um, Growing up in Pittsburgh, coming up through the ranks, um, being being the way they ex describe it, he's basically like this close to getting called up, but he keeps getting right, hurt. Right, you know, you he know, keeps getting concussions, and it's really so interesting. Like right on the doorstep, it's you know? really interesting with with Graves because I was thinking about him just yesterday. Uh, I don't know if I saw him in a spot you know, from Periscope or something. And I remember, I remember like you know, probably our second interview with him, and he was talking about how he was really interested in MMA. He was actually considering transitioning to mma 
And I, I think he's one of those guys that uh, in our talks, you know, off air and stuff like, you know, we know it's like he got his hair cut, you know, when we were going to the local shows. And it's like, oh, he had a conversation with somebody about that. You know, that's the notorious thing. Logan, Logan Shulo, he got his hair cut, you know. Um, mm-hmm. it, you know, it, it seems to happen to everybody that gets in there. They, they, they lose their hair. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, it's interesting to see him in this spot, you know, even where he is. You know, yes, he's an announcer, but he's all over the place now. And I think that's great for him. He, he's like a part of that network. But anyway, his, new, his new show is really good, too. Yeah, it is. It is. I really enjoy that. It was at least that episode out with Marvel. And I'm really enjoying that. You know, he's getting out, you know. He's got that that Renee Young level right now. So uh, <laughs> yeah. it's like, yeah, give them more stuff to do, you know. And, and you're you're happy to see them on screen. You're not tired of them. There's something new and fresh. So And he looks different, you know. He doesn't look like a Michael Cole or a guy that would probably replace Michael Cole that they've been trying out on SmackDown. So. Maggle. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, I'm sorry, continue with your, your role there. Oh, you know, I, I feel like I gave away too much already. I, I didn't want to say too much about the, the story points of the, the show. I just wanted to tell everybody that it's really, really mm-hmm. solid. Um, so I know you'll appreciate the production value on this thing. It is off the charts. And they are basically – I can't believe that WWE would ever allow an outside – um, an outside media operation, this kind of access ever again. I, I, I'm shocked that they just, they're letting them run wild. And, and like everything is like, it's like they just strip down, take off all their clothes and just stand there naked and like, Hey, check it out. Let's take a look around. Does it feel like, you know, and I agree with that. Cause after they got burnt so hard with, uh, in 1997 with the notorious, you know, uh, wrestling with shadows that came out around Bret Hart and just accentuated the Montreal theory. Wait, I'm sorry. The Montreal screw job. That, that's, that's my production. I'm sorry. Um, you know, and beyond the mat as well, which they got and beyond burned. the mat. They, they probably felt a little burned by that as well. But the way things exactly, it took a long time for the rock Foley match. And this really kind of goes to that conversation of transparency and ESPN covering them. And I think this is that happening that we've been talking about on the show for the last several weeks. And, and also think there have been E60, E30s, whatever, um, around other people. They did want to know Scott Hall. So you have ones like that and the problems he's had. And I think it's before he came back around with DDP, wasn't it? You know, so I think it may have been those things happen. And I feel like the timing probably worked out that um, maybe those things were in the in the pipeline. And in some way from WWE is, OK, enough of these BS stories about how bad wrestling is. We want you guys to come in and see how it is and see something positive that we're doing. You know, so it might have been a PR play in general by WWE, um, which is smart on them. And this is a thing that happens in the industry, as you as you know, Matt. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think it's uh, this is that first step of that between all the covers we saw in between um, everything going on, all the periscoping, the transparency is happening. Um, and it's really interesting to see where it's going. So. And uh, they do address um, a lot of the um, wellness policy issues. I kind of almost feel like uh, Corey Graves is kind of on the show just as kind of like this perfect example of how the wellness policy is supposed to work. Um, and there is a point where Jeremy Schaap basically uh, just about point blank asks um, Vince McMahon about steroids and Vince, Vince's answer is essentially we're well past that. Um, oh, that's an, so interesting, that's, a, that's, a, the, that's an interesting answer. Yeah. yeah. So it's just kind of his way of saying that like, look, this well, we're Vince's take is that, you know, we're out in front of, most major sports leagues when it comes to drug testing and all this other stuff. Um, they actually show some drawing blood from one of the wrestlers at one point. Needles. Oh, oh, so, yeah. oh. There's cleavage. No. <laughs> Stuck away. Oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a lot of interesting stuff. They, they did a really good job with it. And it, it always makes me, it makes me a little bit uncomfortable whenever they go that deep, you know, cause it kind of like, it, it's kind of like, seeing space mountain with the lights on you know sometimes you just don't want the illusion ruined but it's interesting but at the Very same clear. time you're like do i really want to see how the hot dog is made oh well i guess i'll go see it. <laughs> wait, wait. that's true but if uh, if this de- decreases the number of people who come up to us and say it's fake right then i'm all for it that's true no, yes please if, yes, when please. people ask that i can point to this espn special and be like you know fucking figure it out for yourself you know that's that's <laughs> Nothing but good for uh, for everyone, I think. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Space, Space Mountain's Ric Flair's dick. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I don't. Anyway, in summary. Bobby, Bobby pointed out 
that Space Mountain is Ric Flair's dick. <laughs> and and you know what? He's right. He's right. Seeing Ric Flair's dick with the lights on would be jarring. <laughs> would be very jarring. Next that time was on e- what I was going for, but all right. Next time on E60. But it is interesting because I mean this is this is <laughs> woo. <laughs> Next time uh jeez uh but it is interesting because what's been happening of course you know the big you know kind of nxt is really being put over you didn't see much change in neville other than you got a really cool entrance and more character than i think we saw uh at least you know visually a bit in in, in nxt uh you know i think you're seeing the confidence in that um the, uh, you know, we've seen ads for NXT, which we hadn't seen. We maybe saw one feature, ma- one or two feature matches on Raw, right? Uh, maybe some of them on Superstars or something like that. But they're getting out there even more, and they're on the, they're on the circus, and they have been for a while. They've been on the live sh- sur- show circuit as well. And 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 this was a comment that popped up, and I feel like I think this popped up in the new podcast I listened to uh, today, which I will plug appropriately. I'll, I'll, I'll grab the name for you, um, but uh, it, it's. Uh, I think it's Pod Knowns, if I remember correctly. Uh, but I'll talk about that a little later. Uh, but uh, th- th- there was a mention that Vince McMahon finally watched NXT more recently. And I, I would just looked this up to figure this out. And uh, there's actually an article from Uproxx back in January, beginning of January. And the quote is, sources, again, this is one of those weird sources backstage. It could be real, it could not. They, you know, Take it with a grain of salt. But they described Vince McMahon being very grumpy lately that, and said that he does not like the perception that NXT is putting on better shows than the main roster is. That has apparently resulted in strange situations where Vince is souring on NXT talents before they even get called up. The whole idea being NXT is to get talents ready, blah, blah, blah. You, you know that part. And uh, mm-hmm. if they already have a chip on their shoulder because Vince is, is mad that he's being shown up by these new Noobs on on the uh, lesser show, but I mean that's Triple H doing his job. Yeah, it's funny too. Like they, they there's a lot of moments where they um, where they talk to um, the wrestlers about um, how they came up with their character or how they came up with this little trait or how they figured this one thing out. And like they keep mentioning, you know, almost like embarrassingly because they keep it's almost as if they keep coming to the same answer over and over again. They're like, yeah, yeah, Triple H helped me with that. You know, it just keeps coming up as their answer. So um, mm-hmm. it's obvious that Triple H is super hands-on down there. Certainly. Um, I, I, I mean, it, it, it's interesting to hear um to, to kind of like see him giving the pep talks to mm-hmm. the guys in the back. I mean, I think we've all seen the video of him talking to Graves um, whenever he was, got his um, announcer's contract and, and was – put onto the air as a commentator for the first time. But there's also um, some backstage things where Triple H is talking in the woods and he's talking to Adam Rose. And it's really interesting watching that interaction. It's kind of mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. He, he, he encourages and then he like nitpicks a little bit and, you know, it's perfect. It's, it's exactly um, the way I, I feel like someone in his position should be um, I'm sure, I'm sure he kind of like, like um, critiquing their work. I'm sure he feels like, they're all his kids down there and he has to see them succeed. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Somewhat. It's also a proving ground for him for having this project succeed because this is his first, I think, fully hands-on mm-hmm. project. Um, that in the performance center and everything there. This is this is Triple H building building his legacy of the next stage of WWE and his vision for WWE. I think is very important. And, and I mean, I've talked about before from that uh, Stone Cold podcast they did with Triple H. I really feel that uh, more and more as we get these conversations, those what you're seeing from E60, and they talked about this, and, and and you know any books or anything of of the click and everything like that, they're like, hey, we're wrestling fans, one way or another, you know. Um, somebody like Kevin Nash says, hey, I'm in it for the money, but I love wrestling, you know. Um, you know, and, and I think you see that more and more as you see Triple H coming out of his shell as a public figure, and you see these interactions, you see that you're like, that's a guy that you know is here because he loves to be here. He's not some corporate guy. He's not something like this he's not in for the money he's not here to take over he's here to see wrestling done right and help wrestling continue to be done right you know we felt several years ago we're like oh this is a triple h influence show i mean what, what was the comment in the hangout last night during raw we're like did triple h book this one you know yeah. uh, because they, we were like you're gonna see wrestling and, I, and you can tell he really believes in that and i think that more than anything is going to be the future of wwe um any other thoughts of that lb bobby um yes um, you know what bugs the shit out of me hmm. <laughs> um and now it goes the other way <laughs> well no 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 i it's it's not that it's the fact that that story started with uh the idea that um 
Vince McMahon finally watched NXT and he's angry. You know what I mean? <laughs> that because you hear that constantly. How many stories have started that it's way? It's purely rumor. I, I want an exclusive. It's purely rumor, right? Right. Yeah. Over the years, how who who in the world outside of politics has had their mood speculated on more than Vince McMahon? <laughs> but because this... that's that's the basis to if, if you if you're writing a story about professional wrestling and you want to seem credible, start it out with Vince McMahon feels or, or the Vince feeling McMahon backstage. Said. The feeling backstage is a common common one. And, yeah. and, <laughs> and as if the backstage is this one thing. You yeah, know? exactly. Mm-hmm. The mood, the, the, the temperature of the backstage area. And it's like, what catering where, where Zach Ryder's hanging out? Not getting booked, I, was, or... I was reading a story that someone posted about, um, about a wrestler that was, uh, you know, how they're going to book him going forward and everything like that. And just as a, just as a, you know, kind of a thought experiment, I copied all the text out of it and pasted it. And I, I deleted all the words, um, except for, uh, like the maybe words like speculation and could and possibly and maybe and most of the article is those words every sentence started with words like that or stuff that was they said this on tv right right I, i'm so i'm so happy about this espn thing i want it to be the direction that wrestling reporting goes in mm-hmm. more stuff like when the brock lesnar contract thing happened yeah, yeah. that's yeah. not speculation that's like this is how it is and you know there's a little bit of message shaping happening with WWE there but i think it's a little more authentic and they need to get more it's the reality era area era just like triple h says bob you mm-hmm. have any other thoughts before we move on and uh, uh, i was just gonna say uh one of the dirt sheets tonight had a rumor that vince's vision is going now oh no. yeah i was it like was going what? Blind. <laughs> It's. I mean, there's always going to be spin on stories, especially for ESPN. Mm-hmm. I mean, ESPN is kind of why uh, uh, Tim Tebow was a thing. <laughs> I think they had a whole special on him after he got fired from the NFL. So yeah, yeah. there's well, always going to be spin, but I feel like it's a step in the right. And, and it's just like ESPN much... I'm going to get in a weird spot here, so help me with this. Um, ESPN, much like a cable news network, can really kind of make or break a personality, be it somebody running for president or be it somebody like you being a football team or be it the WWE. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think there's a, there's there's a lot of that, and they're kind of... Can I t- say tastemakers is the right word for sports? So getting them on the WWE side is huge. The Michelle Beadle yeah. thing is not going to help them, but I'm not going to get into that situation. Um, well, fortunately for WWE, Michelle Beadle is not their one and only olive branch into ESPN. They no, still have course. people like Todd Grisham and Jonathan Coachman. Oh, yeah. They, they, they and, kind of uh, got Robert people... Flores, who have not divorced themselves from WWE. Right, right, right. Still there? So I am, and which, you know, are they going to come under fire with that? I, I feel like. Um, I'm not getting to that. Maybe there'll be a mayhem minute tomorrow or something. Um, <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah, I, you're, you're right. ESPN has the loudest voice when it comes to sports coverage. Mm-hmm. Hey, um, I didn't realize he snuck in here several minutes ago, um, probably at the beginning of the show, and I didn't even notice. Uh, Wheels is with us. Wheels, if you want to chime in uh, real quick before we go to uh, uh, talking about some pizza, uh, I really appreciate it. If you have a thought on the NXT thing or if you had a chance to catch even the E60 special. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to see the uh, special or anything because uh, I was watching Agents of Shield. Um, but honestly, the whole NXT thing, I feel if you want to compare the two, it's like when Vince seen your own WWE, it was one giant and all of this old school wrestling. Vince mm-hmm. Jr., you have muscle and giants and characters. Triple H. He's bringing it back to wrestling and indie wrestlers with characterization to but, it, but with he's, the flashiness of like a Neville, but mm-hmm. he can still go. But so, but also an attention yeah. to modernization like social media, correct? Correct. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, he knows what's going on. He's Vince is like, what's this Twitter thing? What is this Facebook thing? Triple H is like, let me handle this. And will be bigger than ever. And it's doing just fine. I love watching NXT. I love the interaction they give to the fans. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want. You want that interaction with the fans to bring more in and keep them. 
Certainly, certainly. All right, on that note, let us know what you think about the uprising of NXT and your thoughts on the E60 as more of us get a chance to watch that on our DVRs and such throughout the week, especially on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. In the meantime, oh, where's it at? Hold on a second. There it is, right here. It's been sitting here for a while, but uh, it's still delicious even when cold at Slice on Broadway. Our friends down there, right up the street, they got a brand new website. Check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. They have a few videos. Fantastic. Everybody needs video on their website if you're, especially if you're a small business, so you can check out the people, check out how crazy they are about pizza, check out that they're really cool people that you can talk to when you go out and order your crazy ass buffalo chicken pizza you're having on a walking day, you're with your wife there on a Saturday afternoon watching the train go by. Or you can step down to uh, Carnegie PA, uh, where they are right down on Main Street, uh, a big location, beautiful location actually, um, and, uh, and and so glad to see them uh, succeeding and being recognized by the city of Pittsburgh, of course, a few weeks ago on April 14th. Uh, with a proclamation and then slice on Broadway Day. They've been uh, supporting us for well over a year here with pizza for our guests that come in throughout the night on podcast day. And uh, and, and we thank them for their support. So please check them out, sliceonbroadway.com and slice on Broadway on Facebook and Instagram and uh, PGH underscore slice on the Twitters. Tell them the Wrestling Mayhem Show sent you and you'll come away hungry. Uh, so uh, until then, hey, uh, let's go to a break. We'll be right back with a big question here on the Mayhem Show. Hey, listen up. This is SJK, Sterling James Keenan. and you're listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey, guys. Welcome back. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I mean, you know, it's the middle of the show. It's a five. You downloaded it. Where did you go? Why do we even have breaks here? Other than show off that we know The Miz or somebody that I just played, right? I'm going to have to play that again. Hey, it's time for the big question. DJ Lunchbox is with us. Papa Lunchbox. Hey, you know what? While I'm at it, make sure you do him a favor and visit panelriot.com for some amazing comic book discussion. I heard it was a good one this week. I have not checked out his amazing talk with the awesome Jack Bunja, uh, but you should. Um, anyways, uh, what is your big question this week, LB? Thank you very much, Sorg. I greatly appreciate the uh, the plug. Um, so I've been I've been thinking about we've been talking about this ESPN business with WWE. Um, the network seems to be stabilizing and doing pretty well. Uh, NXT is uh, bringing in its it's uh, soothing the fans that are booing John Cena and a lot of the people on the main roster. So there's something for everyone. WWE has something for everyone nowadays. Um, and it's it seems less likely than ever that they'll be going away anytime in the near future. So my question is, what would it take for another company, say a TNA or a Lucha Underground, what would it take now, now that the game has changed to such a degree, to be a serious contender against the WWE? This is a weird spin on the viable alternative discussion we had last week, I think. Uh, but no, I like it though. Um, mm. So what would it, what would need? I like I, I you know kind of unpack that a little bit. Um, I don't think can we really expect anybody to be as big as a WrestleMania or or Kingdom Wrestle Kingdom. I was going to say Russell King. Right? As far as a show? Or, or 10. I mean, I feel like that's Love something. It. These are two companies that have been around New Japan and WWE, been around for 20, 30 years. They built to 80,000 people in a stadium, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not, you, TNA will not have 80,000 people in the next 10 years, I don't think. But something, what would it take? But what, what would, would it, it take to get to that point? I, Jeff I think I think what's going to take for somebody else to get to the point to overtake WWE is some massive massive company falling apart scandal financial thing something like WWE network crashes for everybody during WrestleMania 32 and they refund that and or you know that falls apart something else happens like it has to really devastate devastate WWE. It could be a it could be a lawsuit. It could be something else. It could be a class action. It could be something based on these concussions where they're like, yeah, you've been treating your employees like crap, and uh, you have to stop it. But it, even any of those, I think, is sidesteppable. XFL has happened, right? So, can I tell you a secret? What's that? The big question was almost, what would it take for WWE to collapse completely? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, well, my answer is, whatever that is, is what it's going to take for something to overtake it, because it's just too big and too much momentum. I hope I didn't okay. just flatten everybody else's answer with that. Um, <laughs> who else has one uh, prepared there? I kind of got one. Oh, good, Matt. All right, well, I I'll say that 
the most important thing it takes to compete against WWE today is a large established fan base, which is why there is not an American promotion that can dream of holding a candle to WWE right now. Now, on the other hand, a company like New Japan or a company like AAA, they have a fighting chance. They have something that can actually be built on. They have a legacy. They have a large, devoted fan base. And if you look forward to a global competition for professional wrestling fans, then that's where the competition lies. It's a three-way dance between WWE, New Japan, and AAA. Wow. I was going to say... Combine New Japan, Noah, and AAA. Wow. And then they become one mega company and go after WWE. Could you imagine if WWE just absorbed those companies? Then it would be and then, really the World Wrestling Federation. Like, and then on would, w- yeah. I mean, we, we have these fantasies about maybe them buying TNA or Ring of Honor or something, and that becomes a show on the network. One, and they don't need it because they have NXT. That's the only way I can get hard thinking about that. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> Good segue. All right. But 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 you know that specialty thing like or agreement. You know, maybe they bring in King uh, Wrestle Kingdom like Global Force did, but on a higher scale. You know, and be like, hey, let's make more people care about this thing. You know, hey, all the marks do. Let's 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 make it more mainstream and make it as an alternative. Let's 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 become the monopoly of the alternatives. You know, Nakamura and, versus Daniel Bryan. Well, there you I go. mean, how do we know that? I mean, we still don't know much about what Jeff. Jared is cooking up with Global Force. What it, that is, Jeff Jarrett's vision for Global Force. Is I don't know. I, get I, these international stars into America, and we're going to go after them. Now, I don't think that's what's going to no. happen, but just going to be know. Jeff Jarrett smacking people with a guitar. <laughs> hey, 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 they're doing it with Ring of Honor, and they're not selling out uh, ten, you know, uh, yeah, probably even ten thousand seat arenas. You know, um, how does and this is the can, I, this is a kind of a side conversation, but how do we have NXT that's on a very limited, like only what one point four million people um, have this network worldwide, and it's selling out Stage AE down here, and uh, whereas I could probably walk in and get a ticket if Ring of Honor was down there. And they're on a national television across the country in most markets. Um, I, I just can't. What's the difference? You know, where they, they don't have WWE's backing. Them. No, they, they don't. They don't. They don't have the power of that brand behind them. No, they don't. They don't have the power of that that big terrible promotional machine behind them. I mean, for as good as the product that some of these smaller companies can put out, they've got to have the marketing machine behind mm-hmm. it. And that's what WWE does mm-hmm. better than any other company. They know how to do it. At They're least the experts. Uh, any other comments more directly to the big question here? I know I've kind of diverted this a little bit. I'm sorry. Yeah. What the fuck? Or <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, did you have something to include on that? Uh, no, just what I said earlier about uh, just everybody merging together to stop WWE. Mm-hmm. What about you wheels? You got anything to say? Honestly, I agree with Bobby. If everybody would just, if everybody could merge together like a global force with TNA and Ring of Honor with a New Japan, that's the only way that that would be competition. Like something like something like an international wrestling alliance. Yes, like an <laughs> IWC or a cartel. <laughs> And the other, the utterly professional wheels, uh, podcasting with something in his mouth. That's a candy cigarette. Yeah, see, yeah. Jeez. See, oh, this is, we're gonna take over, you know. Podcasting, see, yeah. podcasting professionals, right there. Uh, thank you, LB. Anybody else say? Did I miss any part of that, LB? Did you have an answer to your own question? I didn't. I didn't really have an answer. Um, <laughs> I, I do. I think those are those are all good answers. Everybody ganging up on WWE or a scandal taking WWE out of the equation. Uh, mm-hmm. Those are both uh, both really good. Um, and I, I also I like the idea of just wait. You know, it's bound to happen eventually. Nothing lasts forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So last week we had a uh, question of what wrestler would you like to have his own show on the WWE Network? <laughs> Um, who asked that question? Uh, yeah, who did ask that? Was I think it was Mad Mike? Mike. Maybe? 
Was it Mad Mike? Yeah, it was Mike. So I know we got some answers here. Hold on, I'm I'm locating them. Uh, but we had some people. Uh, I know answer on the Facebook. I did ask to respond on Twitter, please. Uh, but there was a few of you <laughs> out there that had that. Uh, so we'll still kind of uh, answer those if I can locate those real quick, which uh, might be an issue. Hey, you know, hey, you weren't here for the big question. Who would you like to see have a show on the WWE Network, LB? Hmm, that's a fair question, Sorg. Uh, a long time ago, um, there was a, uh, a a fitness craze in America. It was, um, and basically, you could turn on PBS at all hours of the morning, and you would see shows, exercise shows, and you would exercise with the person on the television. This has since moved on to VHS and eventually DVD and Blu-ray, but um, I think we should bring that back. Uh, I remember specifically a show named Sit and Be Fit. It was an old woman in spandex <laughs> who would uh, work out and do stretches using I a chair. I love that show. Um, it was very <laughs> soothing and oddly arousing. So I <laughs> would like to see uh, either John Cena or uh, even better, um, uh, Diamond Dallas Page have a, a weekly show where they uh, they do some kind of fitness. I think it would work better for Diamond Dallas Page. Um, he could do his DDP yoga and walk you through the steps uh, each and every week. Um, but that's what I'd like to see. That's funny because Gabriel, who's been a really big uh, contributor to this and actually the the, the Basic Soronomics podcast, uh, he also said DDP. I um, am not Gabriel. I want to put this to rest right now. There's been speculation that I am also the person named Gabriel that I made an account mm -hmm. and everything like this. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's the, the, the little nickel thing all over again. <laughs> I am not. You know, there Gabriel. was suspicion. I there swear to God. There Today was, we are all Gabriel. We, we are Gabriel. <laughs> yes. No, actually, no. He sent in videos for basic sorgonomics over the last couple of weeks. So we are confirmed. That he is a separate person. He lives he's in Portland. And he's he, 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 and he lives in Portland. So <laughs> Pittsburgh of the West. You the, fucking hear that, Riz? Hey, <laughs> there you go. Listen, you could do anything with that art school training, Sorg. Don't believe LB. <laughs> <laughs> Sorg also has that art school training. Are you aware? <gasps> I, I do. Is anything that's real? How, that's how we met. <laughs> that is how we met. It was a <laughs> yeah. It was a party with a colleague and how I met your lunch drunk to forget the. <laughs> Art school training. <laughs> That's right. Still paying that off. Um, oh, yes. Piggybacking on what LB said, yeah. workout shows yeah, on WWE Network on are an obvious thing yes. that they should do. Oh, yes. Yeah. Easy, cheap. There's already kind of a, a an over-the-top trend moving in that fitness direction. WWE could just slip in there, kind of diversify their uh, network just a skosh. If nothing else, idea. if nothing else, that DVD that the the pair of DVDs they just released will be on demand within six months. I can't Simon, wait. Really. Stephanie McMahon workout. Simon Dean infomercials. There you go. That'd be fun. That's, that's That'd not a fun. terrible idea. Um, mm -hmm. Jim Sharman says Coco Beware should have a show. He should. He could have actually like a morning, a Sunday morning service show. I believe, if I recall, I think he's is he? I think he's officially a patcher. He was very inspirational when he talked with us at IWC. Uh, International Wrestling Cartel, for those that don't know. Um, <laughs> side note, uh, at VOW, somebody said the IWC is is asking these questions or is uh, talking about me or something like that on the mic. And, of course, IWC is the International Wrestling Cartel right up the road from the VOW. And everybody in the crowd says, what? <laughs> <laughs> and he had to clarify inter uh, uh, Internet Wrestling Community. So, uh, yeah, yeah, figure out where you're at, buddy. Uh, so we had another one from uh, Tony Garza. He says he really wants a reality show with Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan where they have to live together and go to financial management classes. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. They live in Space Mountain. Um, of course, uh, our friends from last week will release – will re receive a copy of uh, IWC's – Don't make fart noises. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, no fart noises, sort. No fart noises. I'm, I apologize. You're a clean podcast. No, we're not. I do, I do not appreciate your fucking fart noises in the middle of your sentences. <laughs> they will receive super no indie. No fart third... noises. No apologizing. Two <laughs> rules. Very simple. Yes, yes. Uh, Super Indy 13 is their prize. I'll be receiving that as soon as I send it out. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for interacting with that. And this week you'll receive a copy of. Did I do Spring Fling yet? 
Well, actually, where are we going out? Road to Super Indy. It's the dance. You know what? How about a copy of a, uh, there's a four-way dance happening at the International Wrestling Cartel this week. IWCWrestling.com for more information on that, including uh, the champion Tommy Dreamer, uh, Colin Delaney, RJ City, and Dalton Castle. You may know some of those names. Uh, I find- do. <laughs> Bobby knows. <laughs> Bobby mm-hmm. knows. Um but uh, we're going to give away uh, uh, one from January, IWC Reloaded, where Tommy Dreamer won the IWC Championship. It involves uh, great matches with all those guys, actually. And you kind of see what leads to uh, this match going on. So uh, uh, please answer your the big question for this week that yeah, about um, what would it take to take down WWE and overtake uh, WWE. And uh, you have a chance to win that digital download from PittsburghWrestling.com. So um, on that that note, hey, you know, I, you know, I talk about it every week. ProWrestlingTees.com. Go check it out. I don't need to show you anything. You know the t-shirts are awesome. We wear them here Look, on the shows. I'm wearing it right the fuck now. Yeah, he is. Look at that. ProWrestlingTees.com. Yeah. Pro- Look at it. ProWrestlingTees.com <laughs> slash WMS, and we're not the only ones oh, in there. It feels so good. <laughs> It, there is so much on there. Pick up one of our shirts, but please also support indie ah. wrestling, your favorite indie wrestlers or former non-independent wrestlers that are you on there as well. You feel this good. <laughs> independent wrestling, independent t-shirts. For it's the... like being on drugs, but as a t-shirt. <laughs> and you can get on those drugs too at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. You can use that Pro Wrestling Tees. Uh, so let's get back around. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you can use that. They're going to have to run with that. Made um, from the finest Corinthian leather. Something, rich like Corinthian leather. <laughs> something like that. So, 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 so. Uh, what's next? What is next? What we learned? I popped ahead too far. Oh, we have fan mail, guys. <laughs> Bullshit. Fan mail. Fan mail. Um, I didn't know we still got fan mail, sir. So we, we okay. Uh, Alex Carr is fans abandoned us. Alex Carr is he, uh, he kind of uh, uh, also wanted to put his bid in the hat for uh, hey, uh, uh, a talking point for Raw wrap up that we didn't really get into. Show reunites a payback. Could you see it? Heel, that's he, possible. How about heel shield? Heel shield, they, they were started heels. out as heels, yeah, yeah. What if they go back to it? What if they're, they're turned, you know, and um. You know, and, and they kind of gather around Seth and be like, yep, yeah, you're right. Let's do this. You know, let's dominate. You got the belt. Yeah. We'll get the other ones. You end up with Ambrose a... Ambrose is kind of twisting in the wind. Reigns kind of maybe needs redirected somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, like, I, I think Reigns would be even better as, as Seth's enforcer. I mean, think about mm-hmm. it this way. Think about it this way. Okay, so you've had the authority for a while, but the authority's falling apart. Kane's going away. Big shows uh, is Big Show out of action officially after that match? I guess so. So his enforcers are gone. He's got Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury at this point, right? Like he doesn't Jamie have Noble's tri- all you need. He doesn't even have Triple H, you know. And he's like, this he's is the a secret working. weapon of the authority. <laughs> <laughs> uh, best Come on, they're the lollipop guild. <laughs> best best note last night was Renee Young saying, "I may be working myself out of a job here, but but uh, uh, Jamie Mo- Noble needs to announce every match." So, um, <laughs> but 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 still, like his his enforcers are gone or falling apart. So he brings back and talks into Roman Reigns, say, "Hey, your solo thing didn't really work out there. WrestleMania didn't really work, <laughs> work out for you, there for you, bud, did it? Um, how, you need to go back to what you're good at doing." And he becomes the enforcer for Seth Rollins. Then he kills him with a hammer for calling him Bud. <laughs> I got, I got a hammer. But well, well, got a hammer. well think Bobby about it. Mm-hmm. Think about it, Sorg. I kind of said this like it could have been a whole secret plan by Seth Rollins all mm-hmm. along. For him to get that title, and all of a sudden, he had a, th- a triple threat. No, 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 I don't want a triple threat. Kane, let's make it a fatal four-way. Mm-hmm. And now, me and Dean will fight for it, and if he wins, he's in it. Now you got all three members against a former authority member. Mm-hmm. Turn them back I mean, around. I think it could be is. interesting. And Dean's just there, you know. And and again, they could clean up and and get the tag belts, get everything else, you know, reform the shield in general. And it, it, but a new mission, a new version of justice. Man, this would be so good. Why, can, why am I not booking Raw? Um, it anyway. feels like such a pipe dream, though, doesn't it? You just like it does. Yeah. It does. But wasn't right like there, wasn't you. wasn't breaking the shield up like kind of feel like a pipe dream as well? Like it, it felt inevitable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was hard to tell when it was going to happen. The, the thing about when they broke up the shield, it was like sh- shocking. 
Mm -hmm. the timing of it yeah. was just absolutely just gut punch. Um, because it was like when they're at their absolute hottest and mm -hmm. most popular, and just beat the big enemy in the in mm -hmm. evolution, right? Yep. So, um, but we can have some fun with that. Okay, let me go back to uh, Matt Mike again. Send an email since he's not unable to attend this week. Um, I, I spoke a little bit to his email. It says, Greetings, Mayhemers. Uh, it's that guy that could watch Lucha Underground all day, but after last night's Raw, just just hoping Sami Zayn is okay. It's a uh, mad damn mic. Uh, I don't say those words, sir. So uh, he, he told us about payback, but he has two questions for us. Uh, uh, not to outdo Dustin, uh, but number one, he asked, now now that we uh, now that we know to... Wait a minute. Is this wait? This is a lucha. This is a lucha underground one. We aren't Matt. Aren't you the only one here watching lucha underground? Matt, you're you're muted. Sorry about that, Sork. I I am prepared to answer any and all lucha underground questions. Okay, I, I don't think both of these are going to be. But uh, now that we know that Mentanza is Dario Cueto's brother, spoilers. Who who do you want him to end up being? I will accept the wrestler's name or whatever kind of lucha mask he has. Considering Drago literally turned into a dragon and flew off in a burst of plane when he left, anything is possible. Spoilers. Uh, shut up, Bobby. Uh, Fucking catch uh, yeah. up. Shut up, Bobby. Uh, catch up. You binge watch that and you get right proper up to speed. Yep. Um, first of all, Sword, for those who watched the Midweek War last week, um, I posited the theory that perhaps Matanza and Dario's brother might be two separate things. The, the, the threads are not being tied completely there because the Matanza term was coined by the Black Lotus, and she's been doing uh, Kill Bill Volume 1 vignettes um, wow. for like the last week or so, um, doing like um, shadow kung fu in the dark and stuff like that. So it just doesn't, it doesn't make much sense all we know is there's like a hulking growling thing in dario's office me personally i want it to be goldberg underneath a mask but that would be um, amazing. El goldberg el goldberg <laughs> el goldberg the jewish what mexican lucha gold? sensation el goldberg <laughs> It's just the mask you get the tattoo exposed and everything there's no way not Oro. to know it's goldberg well, or <laughs> Find me a free agent wrestler out there who can convey something so terrifying it has to be locked in a cage in someone's basement for – how long has Lucha been on the air? Six months? Seven El, months? El Boogeyman. <laughs> I got this. Super Oprah. I think I've heard that name before. What? you never heard Super know. Oprah? I guess I need to see Super Oprah. Oh, man. I got a show for you to come to. Um, Martin, oh, you geez. need to see Super Oprah. Jeez. Been in RWA, man. You got you to gotta check the Super Oprah out. It's uh, something to behold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> YouTube it. You, YouTube it. It's better than midgets. Uh, <laughs> oof, that's interchangeable. I don't know. That's a rough one. Okay. That's a rough one. It's better than one midget sword doesn't like. Question number two, because I'm ignoring wheels right now. Uh, number two, who is the best heel in wrestling right now? His uh, Mad Mike's vote goes for either Kevin Owens or Dario. Both are just the most unapologetic bastards ever. What year was that interview, Sorg? <laughs> no. The one that you won't talk about. I'm curious. <laughs> I'm not a... It's been a running gag on the show the entire time. Yes. And I'm curious. I want to know how long we've been... I don't know because I'm not looking it up because I'm not doing a classic interview clip of that one. So. <laughs> um, uh, so, so, so heels, biggest heels in wrestling, best heels in wrestling. Who you got? I think Seth's doing a tremendous job. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I agree. Seth, Seth is that classic. I'm hated but whiny at the same time. But I <laughs> back up everything I do. 2010. <laughs> well, that I was feel like there are two ago. separate conversations happening right yeah, now. There is. Yeah, episode two hundred and twenty-two. We've been making that joke from since two thousand and ten. It's now four sixty-eight. <laughs> <sighs> Feels I'm like sorry. only yesterday. I'm sorry, Matt. Go Matt, on. who's the biggest heel in wrestling right now? <clears throat> the best or the biggest? Best. I love Dario Cueto. Mm -hmm. He is such a slime ball, and he's just brilliantly performed. And like he just, oh my goodness, the, the guy who's performing 
him is, is just bringing something new to the table like every single week. He's just he he has he has taken one of the worst um one of the worst and most repetitive characters in wrestling, the evil boss, and he has made it fresh and entertaining again. It's it's fantastic. So he's got to be number one. Deep down, we all love Kevin Owens, so he can't be the choice. That's true too. Like I, we're excited to see him kick ass. What about you, uh, LB? The internet. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right, though. The internet is internet. the deal in wrestling right now. It's all like wow. dr- drunk wow. uncle. Internet. Yeah. Internet. internet. Mm. Mm. Maybe you're right. Maybe the correct answer was probably um, that I should have given was probably John Cena. John Cena is the biggest deal in wrestling. <laughs> He's toned it down a little bit in recent weeks, but yeah. usually. I, I, I want to put a vote out there for Paul Heyman. I'll, I'll say Stephanie McMahon. Really? Stephanie? No, mm-hmm. oh, that's good. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Oh, I mean, she has been very uh, special when she's talking down to people like she's talking mm-hmm. down to her kids. Yeah. Like, especially like Big Show or something like that. You know, that condescending that she has going on is pretty tremendous. Yeah. But, uh, Wheels, do you have one? He's on mute. I'm muted. Yeah, I know I'm muted. That's all right. I was just thinking, I was thinking. Um, honestly, biggest heel. I'm definitely enjoying Seth, but I'm enjoying the New Day stuff. Oh, they wow. are embracing it pretty well, and mm-hmm. I kind of like a heel Kofi Kingston, which I don't think we've had since he's been in. I think he's been faced for so long that I don't remember if he was ever a heel, but I like it. It's working well with the three you're going to love us or we're going to just keep clapping and being positive. Aren't they the best though? Because they don't know that they're the bad guys. Right. It's always yeah. like, you'll like, what's like that? Go Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like mm-hmm. I don't understand why you don't understand me. Right. Mm-hmm. It, it's the old Mike mm-hmm. McFoley is you can't be wrong to yourself. You have what to, what did we do? Yeah, exactly. It's like, it, you know, even, even the natty thing, like, you know, when Natty kind of did the turn on the Usos to really kind of push her over the heel side, um, you know, it was like, a, listen, I was just trying to help you, you know, like like in her mind, she believes she was trying to help in the worst way possible. Of course, you know, imperfection doesn't mean, you know, that you're it's just intentional. Uh, but uh, but no, I, I think that's that's exactly. And I think all those hit on those points greatly. So. Um, did we miss anybody on that one? I think we can uh, finish off this email from Mad Mike, and we got one more here to check in on from Ciro. Uh, also, before I go, I know last week I said that I was going to give Impact until the end of May, but with the Billy Corgan development and finding out Slammiversary is actually going to be on pay-per-view, I will give it until the pay-per-view. So they better step up. Hashtag EC3 for champ. Uh, white, white Alchemist and ending transmission from Mad Mike. Ciro checks in. Wrestling Mayhem show. Quick email to give credit where credit is due. Raw was pretty good last night. Of course, there are some there are some stuff. There is some stuff that I don't like much, like Lana's face turn, uh, because I think it will kill a lot of Russia Rusev's awesomeness. But for the most part, the show was good. New Day was definitely the MVPs of the show. Got a question for you guys. Since we're coming close to Lucha World Cup, what trios for a promotion slash country would you like to see represented in the cup? Everyone go watch Lucha Underground and Ring of Honor except New York City. You don't get to watch Ring of Honor. Zero out. <laughs> Especially since that's one Ouch. of the biggest cities <laughs> with, you know, Final Battle it, being in New York City. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. I'm don't, changing my... I'm blame, changing my uh, blame Ring of Honor. Blame Sinclair. Ain't their fault. Yeah, it's Sinclair. It, it, mm-hmm. Well, it's Sinclair. It's Cablevision, something like that. Wait, what's up, Wheels? Oh, I said it. I'm changing my uh, answer for the biggest heel. Ciro just won that one. Yeah, he is kind of winning <laughs> heel MVP of the episode right there. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm not familiar with is Lucha. What, what's Lucha World Cup I, exactly? Like this is who's putting this on? Is this the thing TNA is is putting that team in for? I think so. Yeah. I think so 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 this is so so any of these companies like these smaller companies are being involved like like can NXT do one? Can we imagine that NXT can do one? I think we all want NXT to do one. Uh-huh. That would be amazing. 
Mm-hmm. So who would you want? I, like, I have my I have my I have my three picks in NXT. I, I think it's pretty easy. I, I do uh, uh, Hideo, uh, uh, Finn mm-hmm. Baylor, and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, Sami Zayn. Mm-hmm. Yes, completely yeah. makes sense. Representing totally agree. NXT. Or, or interchangeable Owens in there too. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. Even like, though, well, he's a bad guy. Though, I wouldn't so. give that like like heel face mix. You know, especially since yeah, there's a little bit true. of beauty. You know, um, but uh, well, let's say you did WWE. What would you do? Hmm. The shield. The shield. Just put the shield. <laughs> just go ahead. Go ahead. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I can kind of agree. WWE. That. I'd say. Are they? I mean, I don't know if they consider it still wrestling. I mean, I bet you they still could go. I'd put Noble, uh, Neville, and Rollins. Mm-hmm. If I did locals for IWC, I would give. Um... Um, I would, oh, I just had it in the back of my head. Crap. I would give Keith Hot, Colin Delaney, and, uh, John McChesney, because he's just a standby for WC. Okay. For RWA, RWA is a little harder, but, you know, RWA, I would do, uh, uh, Gory Raver, and, uh, I can't figure out who else would fit in with that with you guys. You guys, Um, you guys, you guys are doing a lot Oh, Sanjay. Sanjay Dutt. Yeah, yeah, Sanjay. Yep, there you in, go. In, in a fantasy world where where you know we get to pick people to represent exclusively RWA or IWC, those are my ideas. You know, so. Um, and just for the sake of uh, completionism, the uh, the Lucha World Cup is is being put on by AAA, and it's coming up on uh, May twenty fourth, and mm-hmm. they've got trios teams from TNA and Ring of Honor and All Japan and NOAA, and wow. plus I think the um, the big. Um, uh, Technico team is going to be uh, Rey Mysterio, El Patron, and uh, the former Sin Cara Mysticis. Is that how it goes? That's pretty much as as bad as as you can get south of the border. So uh, pretty good right there. <laughs> Amazing. That's awesome. Um, Gory just recently came back from south of the border a couple, about a month ago, I think. He did a match down there. So... Uh, yeah, guys, I get saw some of that, and it was amazing. Was it? Oh, I'm gonna have, you, uh, you're gonna have to pass that my way if you can. Uh, if I can out. find it, if I can, I'll ask him and pass nice. it along your way. Nice, love to see it. <laughs> so, anybody else have any trios ideas? To get oh, uh, I got one. Mm-hmm. Uh, ROH, uh, Red Dragon, and Samoa Joe. Ooh, mm. it could be good. It could be good. Do they have an official team yet? I think so. Let me let me see if they've announced our right. team or All right. Let's check in on Stop that. for a minute. We will uh, we will go ahead to learn uh, what did you learn from wrestling this week. You can uh, let us know. Uh, we're actually putting this question out on social media for people to pop in. Uh, especially you guys are really responding on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, and we go through that a good bit. So, what did you guys learn this week? I learned that uh, you have to take it easy with your entrance. Otherwise, you will injure yourself in one of the biggest moments of your career. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. That's what I learned. What about you, Bobby? Um, oh, Bobby. <laughs> um, I learned that Raw was fun last night. Really? And Yeah. And come back to me. Oh, Bobby. <laughs> what about you, Matt? Did you learn the, the answer to that question we were talking about earlier? I learned that the uh, Ring of Honor team for um, Lucha World Cup has apparently not been announced yet. So oh, no. drama. Um, let's see. I would uh, make it. Uh, let's go. ACH, Cedric Alexander, and Jay Lethal for Team ROH. That would be, uh, that'd be good. That'd be uh, good. I learned from wrestling this week that Canada doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Someone on Raw told me that. Uh, I learned this week that uh, yelling "Super Suplex City, bitch!" when you're not really having a great match does not help your situation whatsoever. <laughs> yes, yes, it was an awkward oh, first match. Indies. Um, though I do appreciate the guy that came, pretty much came out dressed as the big boss man that everybody just started chanting Paul Blart. Aww. Oh no. <laughs> That's yeah. sad. You got to embrace that sword. You got to come I'm back s- on a segue next. That is he so did. Sad. He did it a bit, you know, but it really was poorly, poor timing. So, um, did I wait? Uh, wheels? Nah. Okay. What did I learn? I have learned that while in Canada, Ryback fed the crowd back with the Goldberg chance and just ate it up, and spit right back at him and went, hey, you can call me Goldberg, but I will turn it around and make you cheer me. 
and say my phrase as much as I want you to. That's and he great. did. He, I loved it. He's like, you heard the Goldberg chants, and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the idea of Ryback as like a motivational force. You know, I mean, like it's it's all he's missing is the Jimmy Nutt story of I was a fat kid and now look at me. You know, <laughs> he yeah. does have that story. What's that? I think he does have that story. Does he, he really? I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. hmm. It would seem know. right. It would seem right back in that he would say <laughs> something like that. Right back in. I, I, right I, back sickle. I, I learned. I, I I realize what I learned now. Okay. Uh, Blake and Murphy make a mean cup of coffee so mean that it'll turn Alexa Bliss heel for no reason at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the hate juice right there. Uh, from the Facebook group, a lot of stuff uh, coming in there. Uh, of course, thank you, Matt, for for the candidate doesn't matter. I guess I was starting to I, I was trying to start that hashtag and it didn't catch on with hashtag Canada doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, uh, Garza learned that Sami Zayn is is an excited, fragile little man. <laughs> <laughs> Carlin's learned that the new day rocks. That's excellent. Jen Carlin's learned that. Uh, Cars learned that uh, John Cena is the ruiner of nice things and nicer people. Uh, <laughs> Daniel on there learned that Cena's theme should be I've I've got a golden shovel to the tune of I've got a golden ticket. Uh, Gabe, Gabriel uh, learned that John Cena doesn't mind banging thick chicks. Thank you, Howard Stern. What? 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 <laughs> investigate that one. Uh, what? And we got Baba Booey and uh, Kieko. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, Jushin Liger is amazing on commentary. Where do I, I find this? That. Where do I find <laughs> that one? You that guys, possible. some of those things you guys need to include links or something because uh, <laughs> I have no reference for any of those things. Huge update on Dean Ambrose's future. Wait, is this is this is this uh, KP thing? That may have been the article that I trimmed down. <laughs> oh, what's that? It. That may is that may have the been thing? the one that I had performed the thought experiment on. Oh, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> maybe. Hmm, hmm. Anyways, uh, Sorg, um, Sorg from the chat room. Yes. Um, the Riz learned that uh, he is all in on the new day more than he was for Tyson, Kid, and Cesaro, or Puppet and Sorg. I don't know what that last part means, but it sounds funny. <laughs> nope. Nope. Running gags make the world go round. <laughs> on that note, you guys can also be included on this and so much more. 412-206-WMS0 or good times at WrestlingMamShow.com. Tell your thoughts on You can tell us your thoughts on uh, wrestling from the week or uh, you, or anything else. Or just say hello. Hi. 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 How are Hi. you? Hi. Is it me you're looking for? You? Oh, is Hello. it me in there? Oh. Mr. Man needs that song now. <laughs> Thank you. It's going to be somebody's theme music next week. Check us out, WrestlingMamShow.com. Subscribe, iTunes, video, audio, all over the place, YouTubes, all kinds of stuff. For Daily Motion, even it's a little bit these days as well. Um, and uh, uh, and please, uh, please tell your friends about the show if you're digging the show. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show if you want to support us that way. We're getting some perks together for you guys to become our bosses. If you have something you want to advertise, that's an easy way to do advertising on the Wrestling Mayhem Show for, for a nominal fee. And we'll talk about you. Look at the fun stuff we're doing with Slice on Broadway. Integrated. Mm, Integrated pizza. in the show. So much so that Pittsburgh has recognized them with a proclamation downtown. Two miles away from here. So, um, Basic Sickness, check them out at basicsickness.com. Thanks to me for doing show notes all night. And uh, check out everybody at Mainstream Matt on the Twitter, 1T, and check out his wonderful blog I saw he was writing about. And uh, Sammy Zane today, right? Yes, I was talking about uh, why uh, Sammy Zane getting busted up last night made me suddenly get. Uh, suddenly not like the uh, John Cena U.S. title open challenge anymore. So It's all about opportunities, sir. Uh, all about that. the opportunities. And also uh, check out Hot Wheels RWA. Check out, also follow RWA Pro, rwalive.com. They got a show coming up in just under two weeks, including Tracy Smothers. Everybody gonna die! Uh, so uh, it's gonna be... I'm really <laughs> sad I'm not gonna be there for that one. <laughs> so uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Bobby F. Maybe I'll mirror catch you, Sorg, Ooh, so you can see I, Well, it. I want to be busy filming a dance... Re no, I'll be done by then we we wrap by like 8 30 or so Ooh, you could maybe meerkat me the show in general 
I watch it. My, <laughs> I watch it while I'm driving home to Pittsburgh for an hour and a half. So I need my <laughs> I need my Timbits because I'm Sorg Sorg. Hmm. So I have your permission as Sorgatron Media to videotape that. Broadcast. Did you listen to Awesome Cast earlier? We we talked yeah. about uh, my position on periscopes and meerkats and stuff, especially meerkats. Is what? that just go? Why, why are people making meerkats film things? That's what Bobby, I, I have to catch you up with something later after the show. Uh, but Bobby, <laughs> you can check out his thoughts and ask him uh, what, uh, and inform him on Meerkats at uh, at Bobby F J Town, or uh, check out InsertCoinToBegin dot com and uh, check out his uh, video show Boss Battle. Yeah. Yes, because it's not this week. Up. We talk about uh, Banjo and t- Banjo Kazooie. Yes, uh, in, in a way, yes, spiritual successor. Yes, and we yeah. get a little Jamaican. Pop lunchbox. I love that everybody. I love that everybody on the show these days. I have a second thing to promote with them. Mm-hmm. Like I love this, although it makes the outro super long, and, and LB hates me so bad right now. But I'm going to make it better when I plug PanelRide.com and the wonderful things he's doing, and a new po- podcast we're doing that doesn't have a name yet. Sheila. <laughs> 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 Name the podcast Sheila uh, after my sister. But you can check it out at sorgatron.com, <laughs> panoriot.com for his stuff. Do you have any words? Me? Yes. Uh, Panel Riot, real good. Talk about Avengers soon. Uh, soon. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yes, and check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com as well. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Thank you, everybody, in the chat room, uh, live. Check it out later, uh, uh, talking with us all week. People I run into at wrestling shows and say, hi, love the show. Thank you very much. All very much appreciated. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.